So welcome to today's IG English live lesson. Um, I had mentioned last week that we're still going to be going through some example candidate responses because it's coming up for the exams in October, just in case you weren't aware, <laughs> for those of you who are writing. And um, I think it's a, nice, it's a nice thing to go through some examples that candidates have written in the exam so that you get a better idea of the sort of thing that you might be able to produce yourself. Okay, and also it lets you know what you should do and what you shouldn't do in an exam situation. So let me share my screen with you. And, uh, okay, oh, let me just see if it's gonna work. No, it did not work. Yes, it did work, yay, okay, perfect. Good, okay, so let me also just put the chat box here on the, on the side so I can see your lovely comments that you made. Good morning, hi. <laughs> okay, let's look at what we're gonna uh, discuss today. So remember this booklet you can find online if you look for yourselves, just type in um, the keywords and the uh, syllabus code and you should find it. And remember that with Cambry Learn, um, you will be writing paper two and paper three. I'm sorry, if you are doing the normal IG course, not a core course, just the normal IG course, you're gonna be writing paper two and paper three with Cambridge, okay? So we're still focusing on paper two reading passages. Last week we had looked at paper two, we looked at part A of paper two, um, and we had looked at um, a response to reading, but now I would like to look at summaries. We're gonna look at summaries, and that was going to be based on passage B, or part B, of, um, of this booklet. Okay, let me just see uh, if I can change the color of the pen here, sorry. I know why it's showing as blue all of a sudden. Oh well, we're stuck with a blue pen today. Maybe that's nice for a change, <laughs> okay. All right, so this is question three. The summaries question is normally question three, and it is based on both passage A and passage B, but because last week we looked at passage A, I just want to look at passage B today. So read passage B carefully, what you're doing exam, and then you would reread passage A. We won't have time for that in this lesson, but if you missed out last week's lesson, go and have a look at that um, under the live lessons tab, okay, so you can catch up if you want. Okay, so this is um, all about uncles instead of aunts this time, uncles. They come in all shapes and sizes, are young and old, and may or may not have children of their own. But the only thing that matters about uncles is whether they are good or useless. <laughs> good uncles show you love and attention because they are part of your family, but know that they do not have the long-term responsibility of parents. They probably only appear briefly for a week or two at a time and are unlikely to find you irritating. When they do come, they bear presents, not necessarily expensive ones, but welcome presents that your parents avoid buying, such as noise-making objects. Okay, so note there's a little bit of sarcasm going on there, or humor. Remember too that uncles are on holiday and are available to whisk you away to the places that you love to go. Not being responsible for your diet, they feed you on fatty foods and burgers that they call treats, knowing full well that your parents disapprove on health grounds. They encourage you to do risky things like climb up high walls, and they rescue you when you can't get down. Here now is a simple test by which you can identify a useless uncle. On such occasions, watch for a jittery blinking of the eye and listen for these telling words. I think that's enough. It might be dangerous. These uncles have even less confidence than your parents and have failed at the first hurdle. Okay. Useless uncles spend too much time sitting in chairs doing what they call holiday reading, usually of books called Lives of the Great Philosophers or How to Solve the World's Economic Problem. If you ask them for a game of football, they reply, later, I'm too busy at the moment. A real uncle shows no sign of being able to read at all. For example, he ignores all signs that say, no ball games. As soon as he sees a ball, you and he are away to the nearest open space. The reason for this enthusiasm is that most good uncles are keen to play games, and they see you as an ideal opportunity for them to show off. Because uncles are not your parents, they have lived separate and maybe exciting lives. 
You know all your parents' stories, at least those they are prepared to tell you. Useless uncles will have spent an unadventurous, sheltered life and anyway are unaware of anything that you might find interesting about them. An enterprising uncle will tell you about his life among the gorillas or how he saved his companion's life by driving off a charging rhinoceros. Maybe these stories are not strictly true, but that is not the point. Good uncles have an imaginative, creative spirit and a talent for fiction, such as the adventures of a Mr. Snodgrass who lives in an obscure corner of your house and who only emerges when you are asleep. No doubt a useless uncle will try to entertain you as follows. I once read about a chap called Proust who went on a journey to, oh dear, I've totally forgotten where. It is clear that such uncles have no qualities that appeal to children and they should be locked up in a library surrounded by volumes written in Latin until they crumble amongst the dusty pages. <laughs> Sooner or later, it is time for your uncles to depart. Bad uncles will shamble down the drive, bearing two old suitcases full of extra underwear, old woolen garments, and half-read books. Good uncles will have their arms smile, oh, well, well, sorry, good uncles wave their arms, smile big smiles, and wink at you to promise more wickedness next time. When you turn back to the care of your parents, you will discover that your good uncles have left gentle hints which followed up will be of at least a little advantage to you. Okay, so this is quite um, uh, an easy paper to follow. Oh, and hello to those of you who have just joined as well. Um, you're asking whether paper two is also paper 22 and paper three is also 32. Yes, they get an extra digit put in front of them. So two would be 22 and three would be 32. Yes, correct. Um, and so, yes, this is quite a simple passage to, to follow. And that's quite nice when it comes to summarizing because you can essentially just make the main points that you want to make. Now, let's see what some of the candidates have done with this. But before we do that, let's look at the question for number three. It says to summarize A and B. And obviously today we're only gonna focus on this passage. What makes a good uncle as described in passage B? Okay, and this is out of, 10 marks and the next one uh, would be out of 10 marks as well but we're only going to look at this one so you should write about one side in total allowing for the size of your handwriting so you want to produce at least half a page on each of the two texts you would have to summarize and uh, now they would give you up to 15 marks for the content of your answer so in other words your ideas and up to five marks for the quality of your writing your spelling your grammar etc Okay, so content um, is more important than quality, but you want to fight for every single mark you can possibly get. So definitely still work on the quality of your writing. Okay. Now, the examiners have very kindly produced um, a summary of the main points that they've reworked into their own words. And you need to try to use your own words when you do summaries. We've looked at this before in some of the live lessons for summarizing, um, but I just wanted to touch on it again. You try to use your own words as far as possible because that is what true summary is all about. It's about condensing ideas and reworking them into um, a more, um, not simplistic, but more sort of communicative way. So, so here are some examples of how the examiners have done. Number one, what makes a good uncle? Well, they give love and attention. They spend time with them with their nieces or nephews don't find children irritating they enjoy their company they bring presents they take them to places they like they let children have burgers etc favorite food junk food and i think that um some of these bolded words are words that they've taken out that they haven't changed in any way how do you change love um presents you could change to gifts i guess but i think they're just trying to show you the main ideas here let you do daring things, have to rescue you, take risks. They are keen on ball games, games in general. They are energetic. They are not interested in reading books. They live exciting lives. They can make up stories. They are cheerful on departure. Um, indicate more of the same kind of behavior next time. They promise to return. They make suggestions to your parents on your behalf. And that's a very good way of wording those final two lines that it closed with 
this idea of making suggestions to your parents on your behalf because this is worded in quite a blanketed way um, let's have a look at how it closed there when you turn uh, when you turn back to the care of your parents you will discover that your good uncles have left gentle hints which if followed up will be of at least a little advantage to you so that is nicely summarized here as um, they will make suggestions to your parents on your behalf and also um, good uncles disobey rules they ignore notices they're reckless they're risk takers uncles so the reason they do this um, they sort of summarize what is good about uncles in in as a whole as is mentioned in this passage and then if we look down here we can see the bands the, the bands that you would get for your quality of writing and there was one for the content but we'll look at that later after we've gone through some of these samples okay some of these examples so this is um one of the summaries from candidate k and let's look at 3a in this text it shows you how an uncle should be an uncle is almost like the older brother you never had taunting and amusing a good uncle is someone who can show you a good time and endlessly cracking up wise jokes to keep that amused smile on your face even if you have just fallen out of the tree he told you that you couldn't climb because you are such a girl a good uncle makes you want to show off your new football tricks when he just embarrasses you be doing an even cooler trick maybe that meant, should be fine this test completely shows what and how a good uncle should be like, even if he does encourage you to play on the no ball games area. Do you feel that just by reading that summary of the extract, oh, sorry, that summary of the extract, that this was a good, that this pointed out the main points in the extract? What's your opinion here? Did the student get all the points in that summary? And do you think they wrote half a page? Yeah, no, not really. No, there's quite a few things that have been left out. There's too much focus on um, climbing and not enough of the overall picture, I would say. So, um, yes, it's a little vague in bringing across the main ideas. I agree, absolutely. Good. Okay, so let's have a look at what the examiner said. Only five points were correctly identified, hence, yes. It gives too much unnecessary information. It's focusing on things that aren't quite the main focus of the extract that are touched on, but are not the main focus. So only five points were correctly identified. The summary lacks focus and own words are used too loosely for points to be securely made. <laughs> Rambling, yes, good, exactly. So it's good to put in your own words, but at least reflect some of the words from the original extract, because some main ideas can't really be translated in any other way. You give somebody love and attention, um, for example. Things can loosely be, uh, things are too loosely uh, reworded here. New football tricks, um, a cooler trick. Does he embarrass you doing a cooler trick? Where did it say that? It says he wants to show off, but was it about embarrassing you with a cooler trick? Okay, so there's just too much looseness here going on with ideas still try to remain focused on the main points of the extract. Now let's look at what candidate N said. Okay, this looks definitely more like um, more of a half page kind of um, a length in writing. A good uncle will continue to care for you and love you unconditionally. That's a nice way of putting it. They will dedicate their time on you or to you of, regardless of how busy they are. They will never find you annoying and are always willing to buy any toys for you that your parents will never think of buying. Hmm. Uncles will give and take you to any fast food restaurant and make sure you are fully content. They may even urge you to do dangerous and exciting activities and will always be there to save you when you are at risk. A good uncle will be keen to take you to football game without moaning how busy they are. They will also keep you entertained by telling anecdote of something they have done particularly remarkable. Good uncles will allow you to do basically anything without any rules or limit. They are your good friends and will always be there for you. Children often dislike their aunt, 
because they are very strict and forces you to obey their rules. They give you little or no freedom and will never let you do the activities you like. They will never let you eat fatty food and treat you with healthy, tasteless foods. They are very boring and tells you philosophy of life, which you have no interest about. Your aunt will have total control over you and life is boring and odd. And so this candidate just stuck those two A's and B's together into one. Make sure that you separate them out into A and B. Be clear, okay? Um, so, <laughs> sorry, there is a funny comment that's just come through that somebody's uncle once glued a teacher to a chair. <laughs> I suppose that would be quite amusing, depending on who you are, the uncle or the teacher. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so, focusing back on this, um, try to be clear about which passage, which question you're answering. This is A and this is B, this is the aunt, this is the uncles. And um, give me your opinion on what you thought about this. Do you think that the writer of this passage, of this paragraph, is a first language English, te uh, English speaker? First language, mother tongue, it was their native language. Do you think it was? Okay, here's an answer. Yes, they have a lot of complex sentences. It's true, there are a lot of complex sentences, so they're definitely an advanced speaker, okay? However, there are certain things that alert, certain repeated patterns that, um, that alert a market to the fact that this may not be possibly a first language speaker. Um, so things like, um, where was it? Uh, I was going to say you. Uh, they will also keep you entertained by telling anecdote, anecdote dotes of something they have done particularly remarkable of something um, that they have done that was particularly remarkable um, let's see what else was there the grammar is slightly different yes and here's another suggestion the candidate rambles on and some of the points feel like they are over exaggerated a bit yes yeah so I think just from this I would I would as a marker think that this person might be a second language speaker simply because of this, um, mostly because of this, the way things are expressed in certain places and because of this idea of concord. There are other concord errors. I don't want to have to go through the whole thing again to show you, but there are different, there are more than one concord errors here. And usually that will tell you that somebody's not a native speaker because um, they will tell you anecdotes. They don't just tell you anecdote. They don't just tell you joke, they tell you jokes. Okay, so the little things like that, might alert you to the fact that this is um, a second language speaker. And in fact, that then should mean that you should be much more lenient in the way that uh, this passage might be marked, okay? Depends on the marker you get. <laughs> yes, there's some strange expressions here, okay? And so no, it will never count against you if you're a second language speaker writing for Cambridge. They do try to take it into account that they try to be lenient if you are a second language speaker. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't work on your grammar, okay, because they can tell when a person is a first language speaker but is simply not um, using grammar rules correctly and when they are a second language speaker, generally, okay. So question three, this brief response contains nine points in all. And so I got, I was hoping that this half page was the answer to A, uncles, but no, it's also to do with aunts. So yeah, it is, that's why it's brief. This should have been the size of their answer to uncles. So this brief response contains nine points in all, but only two of them are in the second part. The style lacks concision, so um, being precise, so too wordy, maybe that's where those complex sentences come in. And there are some generalizations in both parts. So you know that idea of being a bit too loose, of not focusing enough? Perhaps that's what's happening here, bringing in things that aren't necessarily in the extract. Okay, so this, person got nine for reading and content and two for quality of writing. So um, yeah, that would have been an 11 for this section out of 15, which actually isn't so bad considering. But overall they got a grade C. Okay, so that's a grade C type of answer. Now let's look at candidate Q. Um, they've separated at least the two paragraphs out, even if they haven't listed them as A and B, but I would recommend that you list them as A and B. Let's have a look. Good uncles always try to make you smile and will do anything to get your attention. Whenever they come to see you, they come with presents and gifts. 
remember you're summarizing here, so maybe it's not a good idea to list the same idea twice as one under one expression. Uncles can also take you to many places where you would not go with your parents, and because they are not around, around you all the time, they do not know about the no fast food policy, so they take you to eat all the things you usually aren't allowed to eat and also pressure you into doing extreme things like climbing big hills and are always there to come and rescue you as fast as possible. Wow, that is one long sentence. <laughs> that is one long sentence running from one idea over into the next idea. It's like a spillover. Avoid doing that, okay? Make one idea clear, make the next idea clear. Keep the climbing and the risk taking away from the junk food, okay? Good uncles are the ones who ignore the signs and go against them, such as areas where ball games are prohibited. Full stop. He will play football with you or tell you all kinds, all kinds of exciting stories which might not be true but are enjoyable to hear as they let your imagination and creativity run wild just to get your attention. Okay, so once again, a very long sentence. Also, when they leave, they always smile with big smiles and give you big hugs and tell you to prepare for another wild and crazy time. Okay, wild and crazy. Hmm. Was, do your uncles want you to have a wild and crazy time? Sounds a bit like um, sort of some overnight party that um, you know people might throw at the end of school, which might be wild and crazy, but are your uncles being wild and crazy? That's debatable. There's a slight difference, right? He's being more lenient, he's being fun. I don't know if he's wild and crazy. Um, did the passage talk about giving big hugs? It talked about smiles and waves and things like that. I didn't remember big hugs. Um, I know, so there's a bit of, this is just too uh, rambling again, and too um, also generic in places and avoid doing things like this, where you're trying to summarize. That means shorten a text, don't add, Something that's unnecessary. What are presents? Well, presents are gifts. Choose one or the other. Right, so only 11 points are made in this slightly long art summary. Concision is therefore not well demonstrated. They needed to be more concise, word things a bit more precisely. The response is in the candidate's own words, however, which they liked. So overall, it got an, an 11 for the reading and the content, and three for the quality of writing. Okay, so they got a 14 out of 20 for that section. And that gives, um, overall their script got a grade B. So slightly better than the previous one? Mm, possibly. Okay. How has this person not gone over the word limit? Also ma'am, how important is the word limit? So they don't give you a word limit in the question. I didn't notice one, but maybe I'm wrong, but I didn't notice them saying, it just says you should write one side in total, allowing for the size of your handwriting. So if you um, had a bigger size handwriting, you could, in theory, go over that one page. But the main point they want to make is that you must include these main points, the main, the key points. This, 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 this. If you reduce every single idea in there, you will get every single one of these points. And that's what they want to see. Okay. So there were 11 under the uncle section alone um, with some relational um, ideas, keen on ball games, so they're energetic. They make suggestions to your parents, so they disobey rules, etc. That's why these are what I would call relational. But um, there's 11 for the uncle passage, and there are another uh, nine, is it nine, for the aunt's passage. So in total, you should be making 20 points in that summary, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that your summary should read like, uh, like, like these points. Keen on ball games, full stop. Are energetic, full stop. Not interested, <laughs> no. It still has to flow like a paragraph that you have written and that makes sense for somebody reading it. But those ideas, these main ideas, should be in there, okay? So no, there's no word limit, but just don't exceed that one page especially if you're exceeding it simply because you're rambling. I mean, I would argue that if this person had produced this, this size summary, but had put in every single point, I don't know that I would penalize them for that because at least they've covered everything if they've done it in a concise way. So that was candidate, that, that was the candidate that got a grade C, no, that got a grade B, sorry. 
ask now, let's look at a candidate who got a high grade B. Oh, we're running out of time. Okay, good. Well, let's just read this in three minutes. Good uncles give you more good than bad. They come during free times to bring children presents that you want. They don't come for a long time, but when they do, they give you all his attention by bringing kids to new places to try new things. They care for children, but in a children's way. Hmm. Such as giving treats and letting them try things. Because he has confidence in the kids, but when they go, but when they do get stuck, he will save them. Good uncles will not read, but play games with kids. He does not follow the rules and are only excited when it comes to playing with kids. They have to be adventurous and have the creativity to tell interesting stories. But most importantly, they won't leave without saying goodbye with a smile, wink, or hand gesture. Okay, so at least let's try to rework this extract, but I still don't think it's that complete in thought. It's also poorly phrased, making me think perhaps this is also um, a foreign language speaker or a second language speaker. Um, let me just see, uh, okay, so here is a question. What is the difference between a high grade B and a grade B? So I don't know if you've ever seen when you get your marking back, I'm not, I'm not sure um, if your IG teacher who does your marking includes these um, marking bands in your, uh, in your written work. Um, you know, when they mark, sometimes I will, for my students um, at, at AS level anyway, I will include the marking band showing them which band they fall into. And you can be of a high mark within that band, as in you fulfilled all these criteria, there's no question, or a lower mark in this band, which are mostly like you're, you're almost there, there were one or two errors, but we can overlook them, they weren't so bad or severe. So you'll be in a lower band range or a higher band range. And that's what is meant by that normal grade B or a higher grade B. Okay, hopefully that answers your question. Good, I'm glad you're thinking about this thing. Let's have a look at the comment that was made to this. You know what's good about it? It was short, it was sharp, it was concise. So that was good, but I don't know if it was very um, inclusive. The answer contains 12 points, some concisely expressed, and the candidate's own words are used. The sentences are simple, plain, direct sen sentences, and sometimes list-like, however, and therefore lack fluency. So maybe because, um, just like I was showing you that stilted thing, that stilted um, list that I read out before with the examiner's um, summary, you want, to maybe, you want to make it flow like a paragraph. Although, I must say that, in general, if you can write clear, simple sentences, but which flow nicely on from one another with the odd complex sentence thrown in, that will always lead to clarity. Okay. All right, we've run out of time. So thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>